This story took place in a small town in the state of Florida. I didn't expect such a drastic change to happen to me in just a few months. My name is Lucas, and I'm 27 years old. At first, everything was smooth sailing. I've been in a relationship with a beautiful girl named Mia for seven months now. I was even thinking of proposing to her, considering her my one and only true love. However, after a New Year's Eve party at work, everything went wrong. I vividly remember that evening, as if it were yesterday my co-workers and I gathered in a cafe decorated with Christmas decorations. It should have been a normal, predictable evening until she walked in. In that moment, my world stopped. Her name was Emma. She was about 46 years old, yet she looked amazingly young and stunningly beautiful. In that instant, our gazes met and I was captivated by her exquisite attractiveness. She looked like a true queen, dressed in an elegant gown, with a large neckline, and displaying exquisite manners. That evening, we exchanged contact information, and I felt I was falling in love. I was elated, floating on cloud nine, but at the same time tormented by inner turmoil, contemplating whether or not to call her because of my current girlfriend. Our relationship was quite serious, but all doubts dissipated when my girlfriend invited me to meet her mother during a visit to their home. Entering their house, I could not have imagined that this evening would completely change my life. Standing before me was none other than Emma, my girlfriend's mother and my future mother-in-law. Her facial expression mirrored my own surprise, and in that moment I realized it was probably fate. I almost dropped the bottle of wine, feeling the weight of everyone's attention on me. It was an incredibly unusual situation, but Emma easily saved the moment thanks to her self-control and ability to keep herself in control. The evening passed in a cozy atmosphere, but my thoughts were elsewhere. I was talking to Emma as if we had known each other for a long time. We laughed, exchanged glances, and seemed to fit together. Our first meeting went smoothly, and three months later, Maya and I moved in with her mother. I now lived with my mother-in-law, who lived alone in a spacious house. One weekend, Mia had to leave urgently for work, leaving me alone with my mother-in-law, Emma. As we chatted, I offered to give her a massage, to which Emma happily agreed. Little did we realize that when we entered the bedroom, things took an unexpected turn. Our clothes were lying wherever, the most important thing was that my mother-in-law and I were on the bed. Even though I knew it was wrong, I couldn't resist. Emma and I decided to keep our relationship a secret, meeting privately, sharing outings, and our thoughts. It wasn't an easy decision, but we've managed to keep our secret for two years now. Full of anticipation, John, dressed in a simple red t-shirt, blue jeans, and black sneakers, entered the office of his new boss. The brunette was sitting comfortably in the spacious, light-filled room, making quick notes in her professional journal. Hello, Anna. He greeted her eagerly. You wanted to see me? Hello, John, she replied in a soft, melodious voice, briefly meeting his gaze with her captivating dark eyes. Please have a seat. I need to finish going over some reports, and then I'll get to you. Nodding silently, he sat down across from her in the same brown chair, unwittingly charmed by her presence. Despite her 48 years, Anna radiated a youth and beauty beyond many impeccably dressed businesswomen. Possessing a regal and mature beauty, she radiated unrivaled luxury, dressed in an elegant dark suit and short white skirt. The guy couldn't take his eyes off her, mesmerized by her appearance. Not expecting his new boss to have such an attraction, he blushed involuntarily and quickly averted his eyes, silently scolding himself. She's older than you. Stop it, John, stop it. So, John, I summoned you. Addressed Anna to him, having finished her business. At that very moment, however, she involuntarily noticed the way he was looking at her, mentally, John felt as if he had fallen under the ground with embarrassment. You are young, 
Springtime seems to be having its effect on you, she remarked. I slyly answer him with a look, she thought. I know very well that I unwittingly arouse the admiration of men. By the way, that's why I called you here. I don't understand, he exclaimed, startled by her words. What do you mean by that? Are you asking me to be loyal to you as your chief? To gauge their loyalty to me, I conduct performance reviews when selecting employees for my company. First and foremost, the potential employee's willingness to obey me, their boss, in all things, is assessed. John was stunned by the insolence shown by his experienced boss. Meanwhile, Anna got up from her desk, closed the office door, and sat down next to John. John was subsequently successfully evaluated in his new boss's office and eventually became her trusted assistant, spending much of his time there. On January 19, 2024, two new young men came in to apply for a job, and Anna, as director, called them into the office and ordered everyone in the office to take a break while she interviewed them. The whole office, of course, knew what was going to happen in her office. And these two guys named William and Harold didn't leave the office for over an hour. And I was listening to what was going on, but Anna probably knew that I would be at the office door. She opened the door abruptly and she shouted, John, what are you doing here? She said with a smile, come on in and help the guys take the exam because you passed it with flying colors. That's how my boss still hires young guys today. She has a principle, you take it or go home. Story number one. Hi everyone, my name is John. I'm a 22 year old former college student already working at a construction firm. I am not currently in a serious relationship, but I am happy with my situation. I have always liked the attention of women, probably because I consider myself attractive and in the prime of my life. My friend Eric has a house in the countryside that is only half an hour away. We often gather there with friends to celebrate special occasions or just enjoy barbecuing and drinking beer. However, the highlight of his home is the sauna. The long-awaited summer has finally arrived, although for me, it was not so long-awaited because I am already working, unlike my friends who are still studying. My vacation was planned only for the end of October. All my friends had already left some to the sea, some to the village. It was just me and my friend who happened to be the owner of the house. Because of my shift work, I didn't want to go out after the day shift and even less after the night shift. Weekends flew by quickly and imperceptibly. One day, my friend and I decided to spend time at his house, drink beer, socialize, and of course, visit the sauna. It was a vacation from the usual routine. I had just finished my night shift, took a little nap, and then met him outside the store to buy everything I needed before heading to his house. Everything was bought, but Eric mentioned that his mom, Victoria, would also be home that day. She was bored at home and would rather go out of town and also clean the house because my friend didn't like to do that. I didn't mind, especially since I knew Aunt Victoria well. She was already 40 years old, divorced, dark, short hair, good looking, and had very nice breasts. I liked to look at her. I had once enjoyed Aunt Victoria's beauty in the city, and now we found ourselves together in the same house. It excited me so much. She was the love of my youth. When we arrived at the country house, Aunt Victoria was already putting things in order and preparing a delicious dinner. I just looked at her and realized that she had not lost her beauty. We went to the bathhouse, roasted meat with vegetables, and talked, joked, laughed, drank beer, which I must say did its job. And when it got dark, Eric ran out for whiskey. And the more the alcohol affected me, the more relaxed the conversation became. I kept glancing at Aunt Victoria, and she kept catching my eye. We decided to spend the night there. It was warm, and we didn't want to go home. Eric went to bed, and I sat there with a cigarette and looked up at the stars. Aunt Victoria came up to me. She asked, John, why aren't you going to bed? I slept in after my shift, but I don't feel like it now. I see, 
she replied. Listen, John, why were you looking at me so strangely today? I hesitated and didn't know what to answer, but I pulled myself together and told it like it was. You, Aunt Victoria, are my first love, and when I saw you today, feelings came over me. She, hearing this, even crouched down beside me and laid her head on my shoulder. I took my time to hug her, and our lips met. After a while, we went to the sauna, because Eric was sleeping in the house. In the sauna, she gave me such a massage that I was amazed by her skill. That's what a woman with experience means. She learned a lot before she was 40. Her hands are just made for it. But as you can imagine, the message didn't end there. There were many more games while my friend was sound asleep. We agreed that this would be our little secret, and in the morning we behaved as usual. My friend woke up when we were already sitting outside drinking coffee and cookies. He saw us sitting there very happy with his mom, even though he had a headache from the beer and we didn't. If only he knew why his mom and I didn't have headaches. Our history with Aunt Victoria lasted almost a year and a half. All that time we were very good at hiding our meetings, especially from my best friend. We broke up as suddenly as we met. Aunt Victoria found herself a poor man who was already over 50 years old, and I met my future wife. Story number two. My daughter and her children visit an out-of-town medical center once a month for necessary procedures. During these visits, I come to her home to help with various chores such as cleaning and cooking. This time, I visited her home again, but her husband David could not accompany them as he had to finish his report and go to work over the weekend. My daughter and the kids had already packed up and were rushing to the car. Mammy, bye. We'll be there the day after tomorrow. Love and kisses. She exclaimed, sending me an air kiss. I took my time settling in, getting all the groceries into the kitchen and looking around the house. Eventually, I decided to start cleaning. The robot vacuum cleaner came in handy though it got stuck on the carpet about 10 times, and about 20 times I had to untangle some threads. After I finished cleaning, I decided to take a break and drink a cup of flavored coffee and then start cooking. There was silence in the apartment as I laid out the groceries. At that moment, a feeling of dread came over me. I walked through the rooms, looking for any signs of activity. Everything was spotlessly clean, but no one was in sight. Glancing at the clock, I noticed that it was already 7 o'clock. With a sense of urgency, I exclaimed that David should be home from work any minute and realized that dinner hadn't been made yet. In a rush, I started cooking the first dish that came to mind to make it in time for his arrival. I'll cook for tomorrow a little later. I have to feed David first, I muttered to myself, amused that I was talking to someone other than myself. A minute or two later, David walked into the kitchen, taking me by surprise. Good evening. I greeted him, confirming that dinner for tonight was almost ready, but realizing that I still had to cook and prepare for next week. I pronounced, please sit down and enjoy your meal. I'll be here for a while, I said with feeling, as I quickly set out plates of food for David. I pulled out a bottle of wine, poured a glass for David, and drank it myself. The wine was delicious, as was your company. I consider myself lucky to have you as my mother-in-law. You consider yourself lucky to have me? And you are lucky to have such a wonderful wife and children. You work all the time with no rest. Before you know it, the kids will be grown. I want more grandchildren. Why do you want more grandchildren? Even if you have nothing else to do, you can still have more children, he said. Oh, what a wonderful woman you are. Embarrassed, David stood up and started kissing me, expressing his love. What are you doing? I asked, pushing him away, but pretending I didn't like what was happening. However, I pulled him closer and continued kissing him, completely forgetting about cooking all night. Back at my place, I couldn't resist sending David a text message expressing my desire to repeat the previous night. Three days later, David showed up at my house unannounced. At that moment, my friend, whose name was Eleanor, and I were sitting, chatting, drinking coffee, and smoking. 
Suddenly the doorbell rang. I opened the door and he immediately pressed me against the wall next to the door and kissed me. I was just shocked and so was my friend. She was watching us because she heard the noise and decided to see what was going on. I slapped him so my friend wouldn't think bad of me. But Eleanor smiled and said, David, will you kiss me? If not, I'll tell your wife what you're doing here. David scratched his cheek after the slap, walked over to Eleanor, put his arms around her and kissed her. That's how the three of us spent the night, a lot of things I hadn't done that night in all my years of adult life. Thank you, son-in-law, for giving me a dream. Story number three. Early one beautiful morning, I woke up before my wife. As I got out of bed and walked to the window, I immediately realized the splendor of the day. Watching the mesmerizing sunrise, I made the decision to visit the local coffee shop and perk up with a cup of aromatic coffee. I dressed quickly, making sure my pants were on properly, my shirt buttoned, my jacket on, and my shoes impeccably shy. I lightly spritzed myself with a luxurious perfume and stepped outside. As I walked down the stairs, I greeted my neighbors, including Aunt Jennifer, a stunning woman with medium-length red hair and captivating blue eyes. She was dressed in a short, tight-fitting dress. At that moment, I didn't yet know that all my thoughts would be occupied with her throughout the day. Stepping out of the entryway, I breathed in a refreshing gust of cool air. Stopping to listen to the melodious bird song, I headed towards the nearest coffee shop. Even from this distance, the aroma of medium roast coffee was in the air. Taking a few confident steps, I entered the coffee shop. Hello, a soft voice greeted me. Good afternoon. I'll have an espresso, please, I replied coldly, not bothering to look at the female employee. Okay, Uncle Michael, she replied, distracting me from my thoughts. Hearing my name, I looked up at the bar. To my surprise, the mysterious stranger turned out to be Helen, Jennifer's daughter. What are you doing here? I asked. Helen explained that her mom had forgotten a part for the coffee machine at home and asked if I could wait for her and help her with the machine. Without hesitation, I agreed. Ten minutes later, the front doorbell rang and the room was filled with the scent of a charming woman. Sorry to keep you waiting, she apologized when she saw me. Michael? Hi, I greeted her with a smile. When she fluttered her eyelashes, my mind went blank. I'd completely forgotten we weren't alone. Thanks for coming over. Can you help me with the coffee maker? I nodded silently. Jennifer sent her daughter home and closed the coffee shop door behind her. My thoughts raced at breakneck speed and I could feel the temperature rising in my pants. There was something about this woman with the blue eyes that had a bad effect on me. Jennifer led me into the storage room, asking me to hold the bag of parts, and she moved closer to me. She kissed me gently and guided my hands just there. Don't be shy. It's just us here, and it will always be like this, she whispered in my ear. And in that moment, everything else disappeared. My dream had come true. I had liked Jennifer as a woman for a long time. I often dreamed of being alone with her on a deserted island. That was my fantasy. And then suddenly she did exactly what I wanted to do with me in a coffee shop. I came for a morning coffee, but I got more than that. In the last days of August, Aunt Jennifer and I, almost every day we had coffee at the place. At her pantry, she taught me a lot of things in bed. Thank you, Jennifer. My life has taken on new colors. My wife called me while I was at work. On your way home, stop by my mom's house and set up the washing machine for her, she said with annoyance. I always try to avoid arguments with my wife to maintain a peaceful family life. Besides, I am quite handy and know a lot about machines. Besides, my mother-in-law is a single woman who has been divorced for nine years. How will she get along without a man's help? I quietly grumbled to myself and went to her house. As usual, my mother-in-law greeted me without much enthusiasm, but at least she spared me the boring conversation. 
She had to be kind to me in some way, since I was taking time away from my own child. I walked into the kitchen, assessed the situation, rolled up my sleeves, and got to work. In just 30 minutes, I was done. As I was about to leave, my mother-in-law stopped me and told me that she needed to do the laundry, but she was afraid she'd do something wrong or press the wrong button. I nodded understandingly, and she brought me the dirty laundry to put in the washer. As I was about to cross the threshold, she stopped me again. Let's wait for the washing machine to finish its cycle. I don't want to ruin anything, my mother-in-law said. I agreed and sat on the couch, leafing through a magazine, waiting for the laundry to finish. My mother-in-law joined me, sitting with her arm carelessly behind her head, and we started chatting. She offered me tea, and I gladly accepted the offer. As we talked, the tension between us dissipated, and we found ourselves enjoying each other's company. My mother-in-law and I rarely spend time together, and unfortunately, we have never been able to find common ground. If we do manage to see each other, it's usually in passing or in crowded places. But this time we were alone. Just thinking about it made me uncomfortable, though I couldn't figure out why. On the other hand, she seemed confident and calm. Do you want me to show you an oriental dance? She asked. I was taken aback and almost choked on my tea. What dance? I asked, genuinely surprised. What? Didn't my daughter tell you that I take oriental dance classes? Her surprise seemed genuine, as if my wife and I had no other topics of conversation but her. I nodded and replied, Yeah, yeah, she mentioned something like that. My mother-in-law smiled and went into the next room, calling out from there, I need to change into my clothes for the dance. I replied, Okay, okay. And as I watched her, I couldn't help but think, You're being silly. After all, you're already 58 years old, and even though you look trim, dancing is too much for you. But I decided to be patient and just observe. I turned on the music, and she came running into the room. And that's when my jaw dropped. For starters, she's out barefoot. She wore metal bracelets with bells around her ankles. I couldn't help but notice how shapely her legs were, almost like a young girl's. Her stomach was bare, not the firmest, but nothing to dwell on. Just a normal, slightly bulging belly. I've had worse, right? She was wearing a long skirt or a piece of cloth wrapped around her hips. Nice thighs, by the way. Instead of outerwear, she was wearing a bra adorned with beads and rhinestones. I raised my arms and swayed to the beat of the music, twirling, twirling, bouncing, my eyes sparkled. I felt something. A small spark of excitement. After all, the woman in front of me was not lacking in sensuality. And I was a man. The switch clicked on by itself. My mother-in-law gestured for me to join her, urging me on with her hands. I gave in to the temptation. Leaning toward her, I held out my hand. She stepped closer and began to shake her belly in front of me. Surprisingly, it was very mesmerizing. I couldn't resist and kissed her navel. She jabbed her finger at me, warning me not to cross the line, but to appreciate the performance. I complied. She seemed to want to have a little fun with me. I'm not your average guy either. And that's not all. She screamed with happiness and in one motion, like a magician, pulled her skirt off. I was at a loss for what to do. It was completely unexpected. You see, my mother-in-law has incredibly beautiful legs. At one time, she even participated in beauty contests and won awards. You can't have less long and shapely legs to participate in such contests. Even at the age of 58, her legs were as young as ever. I had never paid attention to her legs before, but now I couldn't help but notice. She quickly put on her high-heeled shoes and spun around again. My mind went blank. I hadn't expected her to be so carefree. I thought maybe her bra was about to come off, but it didn't. She danced around watching my reaction, and I began to feel humiliated. 
I was stunned by her behavior towards me all show, no touching. I got up from the couch and walked toward her, and she retreated to the back of the room. I took another step, and she stepped back again. That's how we ended up in her spacious bed. We even had a little wrestling match, but it was all a lot of fun. To my surprise, her shoes flew up and hit the ceiling, and the rest of her things hung from the chandelier. I used to think that only happened in movies, but it turns out that life can be just as unpredictable sometimes. Naturally, we were both confused. I clutched my head, thinking of my wife. My mother-in-law, however, remained calm. She leisurely brushed her hair, dressed comfortably in her home clothes, and folded her dance outfit neatly. Eventually, we remembered the washing machine. To our relief, there was nothing wrong with it, and it was working properly. We pulled out the laundry and checked the spin quality. Well, thank you, son-in-law, my mother-in-law said, pointing her finger toward the door. Once again, I felt a little resentful. It would have been nice if she had said goodbye to me more affectionately, perhaps with a kiss or a hug. Instead, she became aloof and stern like a snow queen. As I walked home, I couldn't help but ponder the behavior of women at this age. Why do they pursue men? What's going on with them? And why do they only choose young men? Are they trying to revive their desires or are they taking revenge on their daughters? Why do they have so much untapped passion? Their shyness disappears and their life principles seem to disappear. I decided to visit her the next day and prove who would have the last word. A little nervous, I nevertheless pressed the doorbell. My mother-in-law went wide-eyed when she opened the door. You? She exclaimed, taking a step back. Are you the one who arranged for the renovation? I asked in a firm tone, entering the hallway. In an instant, I grabbed her, picked her up, and carried her back to her original spot. She resisted briefly, quickly giving up and joining in the fun. This time it was exciting. Toward the end, I was even exhausted and panting like a wild animal. Honestly, her legs were driving me crazy. I had never seen such amazingly long legs before. I couldn't take my eyes off them. My wife's legs are fine, but my mother-in-law's legs are gorgeous. I got up, dressed confidently, and headed home. She tried to stop me, but I ignored her pleas. I am a firm believer that when someone says no, they mean no. As a man, I believe I have the right to make my own decisions. I didn't even bother to say goodbye. A few days later, I received a message on my phone with a heart emoji. It read, the washing machine is broken. Can you help me fix it? I couldn't help but chuckle to myself. She always wants more. However, I couldn't help but miss her long legs and I won't deny that. I quickly packed up and grabbed my tools, trying not to make eye contact with her. I arrived at my mother-in-law's house, and to my surprise, she was ready to dance. She stood, fully prepared, waiting for an appreciative audience. Once again, she was wearing only a bra, a one-button skirt, and bare feet. I couldn't help myself and fell on the bed. She danced with such intensity and passion that it was mesmerizing. Honestly, I couldn't take my eyes off her feet. There was a lot to admire. Surprisingly, the broken washing machine was not even discussed. Two days later, the mother-in-law called her daughter again to make me come over and show me how to use the washing machine again. What a mother-in-law, I thought once again. What happens to her when she is about to satisfy her hunger? I made a very unhappy face because I have to go almost every day to her mother, who can't handle simple things. And my mind was already spinning with thoughts of my mother-in-law performing belly dance for me once again. I collected the tool again so that my wife did not suspect anything and went to my mother-in-law, enjoy her legs and not only. Yes, women at that age are very sexy. They want to have a lot of fun. My name is Brenda and I am 28 years old right now and my husband Thomas is 34 years old. Our paths crossed about eight years ago when I was 20, 
and he was 26. At the time, I loved to spend time in my apartment spoiling myself with alcoholic beverages. Interestingly, I had a friend named Ruth, who was three years older than me. Surprisingly, she was dating Thomas during that period. Admittedly, I was always strict about not getting involved with my friend's partners. However, it turned out that Ruth wasn't violating my principles, or so I thought. We ended up at a party where Ruth introduced me to everyone, including Thomas. We struck up friendly conversations and immersed ourselves in dancing and drinking alcohol. The evening went splendidly. Ruth and I were on our way home when she shared with me the terrible news that Thomas had left her. It was truly devastating. I stood by her and tried to comfort her during this difficult time. Ruth had been in love with Thomas for a long time, but as time went on, she began to move on with her life. When I turned 19, Thomas asked me out on a date and that's how our relationship began. He was an amazing guy, always showering me with flowers and taking me to fancy restaurants. He was just perfect. Two years later, we got married and completely cut things off with Ruth. She thought we were traitors. Five years into our marriage, I began to notice that Thomas was becoming distant and no longer paid attention to me. I began to doubt myself, wondering if something was wrong with me. Despite his assurances that everything was fine and that he loved me, it felt like a lie. I never gave up hope and continued to believe in our love. One evening while I was working at my computer at home, I received a text message from Ruth telling me that we needed to talk. We met and she showed me a video of my beloved husband cheating on me with her. Shock was not all I felt. I was furious and was looking forward to my husband coming home. But when I saw him, all the negative emotions suddenly disappeared. Perhaps I had already begun to move on with my life and accept the truth before I was even presented with the evidence. We sat down together, opened a bottle of wine, and realized that this would be our last night together. That bottle of wine symbolized the end of our relationship. Early one beautiful morning, I woke up before my wife. As I got out of bed and walked to the window, I immediately realized the splendor of the day. Watching the mesmerizing sunrise, I made the decision to visit the local coffee shop and perk up with a cup of aromatic coffee. I dressed quickly, making sure my pants were on properly, my shirt buttoned, my jacket on, and my shoes impeccably shy. I lightly spritzed myself with a luxurious perfume and stepped outside. As I walked down the stairs, I greeted my neighbors, including Aunt Jennifer, a stunning woman with medium-length red hair and captivating blue eyes. She was dressed in a short, tight-fitting dress. At that moment, I didn't yet know that all my thoughts would be occupied with her throughout the day. Stepping out of the entryway, I breathed in a refreshing gust of cool air. Stopping to listen to the melodious bird song, I headed towards the nearest coffee shop. Even from this distance, the aroma of medium roast coffee was in the air. Taking a few confident steps, I entered the coffee shop. Hello, a soft voice greeted me. Good afternoon. I'll have an espresso, please, I replied coldly, not bothering to look at the female employee. Okay, Uncle Michael, she replied, distracting me from my thoughts. Hearing my name, I looked up at the bar. To my surprise, the mysterious stranger turned out to be Helen, Jennifer's daughter. What are you doing here? I asked. Helen explained that her mom had forgotten a part for the coffee machine at home and asked if I could wait for her and help her with the machine. Without hesitation, I agreed. 10 minutes later, the front doorbell rang and the room was filled with the scent of a charming woman. Sorry to keep you waiting, she apologized when she saw me. Michael? Hi, I greeted her with a smile. When she fluttered her eyelashes, my mind went blank. I'd completely forgotten we weren't alone. Thanks for coming over. Can you help me with the coffee maker? I nodded silently. Jennifer sent her daughter home and closed the coffee shop door behind her. My thoughts raced at breakneck speed and I could feel the temperature rising in my pants. 
There was something about this woman with the blue eyes that had a bad effect on me. Jennifer led me into the storage room, asking me to hold the bag of parts, and she moved closer to me. She kissed me gently and guided my hands just there. Don't be shy. It's just us here, and it will always be like this, she whispered in my ear. And in that moment, everything else disappeared. My dream had come true. I had liked Jennifer as a woman for a long time. I often dreamed of being alone with her on a deserted island. That was my fantasy. And then suddenly she did exactly what I wanted to do with me in a coffee shop. I came for a morning coffee, but I got more than that. In the last days of August, Aunt Jennifer and I, almost every day we had coffee at the place. At her pantry, she taught me a lot of things in bed. Thank you, Jennifer. My life has taken on new colors. We had the pleasure of arriving at the country villa early in the morning with my mother-in-law. There was no traffic, it wasn't hot, and it was very comfortable. We did chores all day, showered as darkness fell. Mother-in-law would set the table, and I would make baked hams from the meat. My mother-in-law was a pleasure to be with. We talked and drank together. Admittedly, I admired her both as a person and her beautiful figure and very large breasts. Sometimes from the second floor, I would watch her bent over working in the garden and I loved what I saw. I openly told everyone that if my mother-in-law was younger, I would prefer to live with her rather than with my wife. She had a fiery temper, and on the summer veranda she was preparing appetizers while I stayed outside fighting mosquitoes and grilling sausages. The sausages were almost ready when two familiar mother-in-laws who lived on the neighboring property came running in at the delicious aroma. They were two friends of my mother-in-law, both about the same age and slim in appearance. They greeted me and went straight to my mother-in-law's house. I entered the house just as they were about to leave. My mother-in-law wasted no time in informing me that she had received an invitation to a birthday party and simply could not refuse. In response, I suggested that she at least distract herself and get some rest, and I would save a piece of meat for the next day and go to bed as I was feeling a bit tired. Without delaying, my mother-in-law hurriedly dressed while I discreetly slipped $50 into my pocket and went upstairs, bringing a bottle of champagne and a few pieces of meat with me. I slowly savored my drink, gradually getting into a more festive mood. Suddenly, I heard the gate creak open. It was my mother-in-law, accompanied by her friends, whom she thanked profusely for a delightful evening. From the sound of her voice, she had clearly enjoyed herself. I came down the stairs, intending to help her to bed, but she declined, expressing her desire to continue the party. Naturally, I welcomed such a lively mother-in-law as I was not averse to having fun myself. We sat down at the table and started talking about various topics. My mother-in-law confessed her loneliness to me, and I gave her a helping hand and poured her another drink. Suddenly she exclaimed, why are we just sitting here? Let's put on some music and dance. Without thinking, I chose a slow tune, took my mother-in-law's hand, and we began to dance. As we moved together, my mother-in-law snuggled closer and closer to me, perhaps feeling slightly dizzy or for some other reason. Our dance was unusually graceful, and when our eyes met, a spark passed between us. At that moment, everything became clear, and I no longer hid my feelings. I realized that the next morning, I would be ashamed. However, in the back of my mind, I also realized that this could be my first and last opportunity, which I took. The next morning, my mother-in-law took a long shower. She came out of it refreshed and satisfied. The only hint of our night of dancing was in her gait. She couldn't remember what had happened after she was brought into the house. I assured her that she had simply gone to bed. Uncertainty plagues me at times. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section. Should I disclose what actually happened to my mother-in-law after she was brought into the house and as I claim, she just went to bed, or is it wise to remain silent? Please advise me on the best way to proceed. I am tormented by the thought that she will remember what happened, and then I will feel bad. 
Since my childhood, I have always been an obedient person. I went to school, did my studies, and participated in sports activities. I lived in a small town with parents who worked hard to provide me with everything I needed. Despite this, I constantly listened to the advice of my father and mother. My father was often late at work without a good reason, which caused my mother great suffering. At first, as a child, I did not understand this situation. However, as I grew up, I began to spend more time on the internet. It was during this period that I learned about my father's affair with another woman. Although I foresaw the inevitable outcome, I was powerless to change further developments. Witnessing my mother's deep love for my father and the subsequent anguish and tears she endured was a profound shock to me. I felt intense revulsion at the thought that my parents might separate. After graduating from a prestigious high school, I enrolled in college to continue my studies. There, I made new friendships. After graduating from college, I would return home, devote my days to my studies, and socialize with friends in the evenings. One fateful day, when I returned home, I found my mom in tears. She confessed to me that she had seen my father in the company of another woman as they were returning from the store. Despite my attempts to comfort her, she firmly informed me of her decision to begin divorce proceedings. I deeply sympathized with my father, but I understood my mother's point of view as well. My mother shed tears at first, but eventually pulled herself together. When my father came home from work, my mother told him everything. He realized that the situation was the way it was because of his own actions. So he packed his things and left. About two months have passed since then. I began to notice a change in my mom's behavior when she would come home from work, glowing with happiness. When I inquired as to the reason for her joy, she happily informed me that she was being courted by a man she liked. After another month, Frank moved into our house. He was now my stepfather and moved in with us. I didn't mind this arrangement as long as it made my mother happy. Time flew by quickly and one evening while I was watching TV, I heard some noise coming from their bedroom. Discreetly, I tiptoed down the hallway to the slightly ajar bedroom door. Looking inside, I saw something that completely amazed me. My stepfather and my mother were making love. I could not take my eyes off the sight, which made a deep impression on me. I had a strong desire to repeat what I had seen, but I managed to restrain myself and, stepping away from the door, headed back to my room. All night I couldn't sleep because my mind was spinning with thoughts about what I had seen. The images wouldn't come out of my head and it wasn't until morning that I finally fell asleep. I woke up to someone gently touching my shoulders and calling my name softly. When I opened my eyes, my stepfather was standing in front of me, dressed only in shorts and a tank top. In my sleepy state, I tried to comprehend the situation. As I started to wipe my eyes, it dawned on me that this was not a dream. Frank urged me to wake up, warning me that I would oversleep and miss school. Reluctantly, I got out of bed, realizing that my nightgown was barely covering some places. My stepfather was surprised and stood in shock at what he saw. Then he said, I didn't mean to see that, I'm sorry. But I didn't let him finish. I walked over to him and put my arms around his neck. He looked a little embarrassed and then pulled me to him and kissed me. I returned his kiss and he laid me down on the bed. My mom had no idea and while she was away, my stepdad spent a lot of time with me and we had fun for hours on end. A month later, I met a guy named Jerry. He was a couple years older than me and we met at a party. I fell in love with him and wanted to introduce him to my mom as soon as possible. So the day came I invited Jerry over to our house at seven o'clock in the evening. At exactly seven, there was a knock on the door. It was him. He came with two bouquets of roses, one for me and one for my mom. Stepdad was home too. Jerry entered the house. My stepfather came out to meet him. When he saw Jerry, he was shocked. Son? Frank said, surprised. What are you doing here? Here I was shocked. It turns out that Jerry is his son, but he lives with my mom and with my stepdad practically does not communicate. My stepdad wasn't happy 
and he wanted me to stop seeing Jerry. You know why. But I don't care. I want to marry Jerry, and nobody's gonna stop me. I work for a well-known financial institution. At first, they were hesitant to consider me because of my past. I spent two years in prison. However, one circumstance changed my fate. Isabella, the director of the company, had strong feelings and sincere sympathy for me. At first, I thought that her gaze through her glasses was full of contempt, but it turned out to be quite the opposite. Isabella received my application from the secretary at the interview and began to consider whether to offer me the job. After a series of trivial inquiries, she happily announced that I was hired. At the same time, I met a girl named Amelia, and within a year, we were married, creating an idyllic family home. While I worked at my job, my wife deftly managed the household chores, cooked delicious meals, and kept her captivating beauty from the moment we first met. And then on one of the usual working days, she met me with tears of happiness and a positive pregnancy test. My beloved was expecting a baby, and I was beyond thrilled. However, not everything is smooth sailing. There were difficulties at work, which became increasingly stressful. I had to work nights, and I felt like I was the only person with this burden. It was too hard and was pushing me to the limit. However, my efforts did not go unnoticed, which led to a call to the principal's office. I forgot to mention that my principal was an attractive woman in her 50s. After work, I went into her office where she greeted me warmly. And then a question arose. How was your work? Aren't you tired? Maybe I should add more so that you can start coming to me. I stood there in a daze. The puzzles in my head were starting to come together. She was deliberately loading me up with work so that I would come to her for love games. In my moment of contemplation, she walked over to me and put her hand on my face. I made my final decision and did what she wanted. She ordered me to lie on her desk and the rest was a blur. She did whatever she wanted. How could I refuse her? I have a wife and a baby on the way and with my criminal record, it's hard to find a normal job. So she took advantage of that. The office was so noisy, I was afraid my coworkers would hear us. I followed her orders with such anger and zeal that I felt like I was going to kill her. But no, she liked it and asked me to keep going. It was even more interesting that way. Finished with the business at hand, I walk out of the study, turning around and looking back. Isabella was sitting there, wearing only her jacket and holding the frames of her glasses. I slammed the door shut. The next week, I was to be transferred to another department and promoted. I didn't tell my wife the details of how a man who had done time in prison had moved up almost every rung of the career ladder so quickly. I already have two children. I still work there. Isabella is my director. And sometimes she calls me in for a conversation that ends up with us doing this. You know what? But not too long ago, a young guy came to work for us. And Isabella decided to use him in her games too. And after a few months, she completely forgot about me. You wouldn't believe how happy I was. I was very tired of this insatiable lioness, but there was no way out. I had to endure for the sake of my family. My daughter and her children visit an out of town medical center once a month for necessary procedures. During these visits, I come to her home to help with various chores, such as cleaning and cooking. This time I visited her home again, but her husband, David could not accompany them as he had to finish his report and go to work over the weekend. My daughter and the kids had already packed up and were rushing to the car. Mammy, bye. We'll be there the day after tomorrow. Love and kisses. She exclaimed, sending me an air kiss. I took my time settling in, getting all the groceries into the kitchen and looking around the house. Eventually, I decided to start cleaning. The robot vacuum cleaner came in handy though it got stuck on the carpet about 10 times, and about 20 times I had to untangle some threads. After I finished cleaning, I decided to take a break and drink a cup of flavored coffee and then start cooking. There was silence in the apartment as I laid out the groceries. At that moment, a feeling of dread came over me. 
I walked through the rooms, looking for any signs of activity. Everything was spotlessly clean, but no one was in sight. Glancing at the clock, I noticed that it was already 7 o'clock. With a sense of urgency, I exclaimed that David should be home from work any minute and realized that dinner hadn't been made yet. In a rush, I started cooking the first dish that came to mind to make it in time for his arrival. I'll cook for tomorrow a little later. I have to feed David first, I muttered to myself, amused that I was talking to someone other than myself. A minute or two later, David walked into the kitchen, taking me by surprise. Good evening. I greeted him, confirming that dinner for tonight was almost ready, but realizing that I still had to cook and prepare for next week. I pronounced, please sit down and enjoy your meal. I'll be here for a while, I said with feeling, as I quickly set out plates of food for David. I pulled out a bottle of wine, poured a glass for David, and drank it myself. The wine was delicious, as was your company. I consider myself lucky to have you as my mother-in-law. You consider yourself lucky to have me? And you are lucky to have such a wonderful wife and children. You work all the time with no rest. Before you know it, the kids will be grown. I want more grandchildren. Why do you want more grandchildren? Even if you have nothing else to do, you can still have more children, he said. Oh, what a wonderful woman you are. Embarrassed, David stood up and started kissing me, expressing his love. What are you doing? I asked, pushing him away, but pretending I didn't like what was happening. However, I pulled him closer and continued kissing him, completely forgetting about cooking all night. Back at my place, I couldn't resist sending David a text message expressing my desire to repeat the previous night. Three days later, David showed up at my house unannounced. At that moment, my friend, whose name was Eleanor, and I were sitting, chatting, drinking coffee, and smoking. Suddenly, the doorbell rang. I opened the door, and he immediately pressed me against the wall next to the door and kissed me. I was just shocked, and so was my friend. She was watching us because she heard the noise and decided to see what was going on. I slapped him so my friend wouldn't think bad of me. But Eleanor smiled and said, David, will you kiss me? If not, I'll tell your wife what you're doing here. David scratched his cheek after the slap, walked over to Eleanor, put his arms around her and kissed her. That's how the three of us spent the night, a lot of things I hadn't done that night in all my years of adult life. Thank you, son-in-law, for giving me a dream. This weekend, I made the decision to take a brief escape from my busy family life. I took my kids on a trip far away from the city to immerse ourselves in the Alaskan wilderness. We spent time fishing, hiking, and relaxing with songs around the campfire. My spouse and I often discussed the need to be apart, and I took the initiative to make it happen. Hopefully, she can get some much-needed rest during our absence. The trip to the river took about nine hours, but here we are. Surrounded by a beautiful forest, various animals, chirping birds, and a seemingly endless river. I instructed the kids to unpack and gather firewood while I myself set up the tent, laid out sleeping bags, prepared fishing gear, and made sure we had plenty of fish bait. As I was laying out the fishing rods, evening crept up on us, and I realized that my kids, ages seven and eight, were already playing by the fire. When are we going to eat? They asked. They asked. Hastily rummaging through my backpack, I pulled out sausage, cheese, bread, potatoes, and sandwiches. Let's cook together, I suggested, handing the potatoes to my daughter. The evening passed quickly, almost without sleep. I fished, and the kids ran around telling spooky stories, trying to scare me. The next day was just as enjoyable. We boated, fished, and made soup. The original plan was to stay until morning, but an unexpected downpour forced us to quickly pack up and head home. The return trip was a long one. The road was almost impossible to see due to the bad weather conditions. Why don't we stop by Grandma's house? She's 10 minutes away, I suggested to the kids. They agreed, and I turned to her house. All our clothes were damp, we were all freezing from the strong wind. 
the rain continued to pour down like a bucket. Upon entering the house of my mother-in-law, whose name was Barbara, she was terribly frightened as she was not expecting guests. Grandma, hello, we've come to visit you, shouted the children, hugging her with wet hands. I told my mother-in-law the whole situation that had happened to us. She prepared dry clothes for us, fed us, and put the children to bed. I sat by the fireplace, unable to warm up, drink quickly, she handed me a glass of whiskey and immediately poured it into my mouth, and I did not even have time to ask what it was. Glass after glass, Barbara tried to rub me to warm me up, but all to no avail, and I was shivering like a hare that had seen a wolf. Barbara pressed her body against mine to transfer the warmth. How sudden! My mind went fuzzy, and I distinctly felt that her hands were not in a comfortable place at all. Something in the atmosphere got hot, I said, trying to stand up and move away from her. It's not as hot as it could be yet, she said, pouncing on me, while the kids slept on the second floor after a nice nature walk. My mother-in-law gave me her warmth, lying by the fireplace. She was unstoppable. She was so hungry, like she was 20 years old. So we came to visit to warm up. What's gotten into her? I thought, what demon has possessed her? Probably, it is loneliness. A woman cannot be without a master in the house. My mother-in-law looks very young for her age. I don't understand why she won't find a second husband. The next day, we packed up and drove home. Barbara walked us to the car, kissed us, and smiled very slyly. She told me in my ear that she would be waiting for me to visit her again, preferably alone. Just like that, Unexpectedly, my mother-in-law and I now have a sweet secret. As long as no one knows, we will have fun. Hi, I'm glad to see you on my channel. Show your support by giving a thumbs up, subscribing and leaving comments. If my husband hadn't been away on a business trip, none of this would have happened. I would have had a clear conscience and would have been happy instead of cursing that night. It all happened spontaneously. I can't remember or understand how it happened, but it did. Jessica, I'm going away on a business trip. Please take care of my dad. It's hard for him without my mom. Let him stay with us while I'm gone, and then I'll take care of him when I get back. I agreed to help. What are my options? My husband's father recently lost his wife. Although she was nothing outstanding, he still loved her deeply. Since she was my husband's stepmother, he didn't experience the grief as much. Robert, my husband's father, is a physically fit and well-groomed man. He is usually reserved and modest, but this time he went beyond his normal behavior as if possessed by a demon. He tried to confront his emotions. For the first three days, we spent more time together. I tried my best to lift his spirits and take his mind off his life with his late wife. I took him to concerts, the theater, and exhibitions. However, it became obvious that these efforts were not enough for him. On the fourth day, his mind went blank. He started acting like a young man. He touched me every now and then, hugged me, just to draw attention to himself. At one point, he even came in without knocking when I was changing. I realized that it was just the loss of a loved one and needed to be endured. I'm a psychologist, so I decided to have a therapy session, timing everything just to coincide with dinner. That day I spent a long time in the kitchen. I decided that he will be pleased if I cook us a delicious dinner. I set the table, lit candles, opened a bottle of wine, and invited him over. I started my therapy from far away, his younger years. I am so interested in learning about you, your hobbies, your wife. What attracted you to her and why? I began our conversation, penetrating deeper and deeper into his mind. I could not keep up with the course of his thoughts, as suddenly it dawned on me that it was he, not me, who was leading the psychotherapy session. He smoothly threw the rod on me and was already aware of all my misfortunes, that my husband does not satisfy me as a man, that his eternal business trips cannot make me happy as a woman that I constantly live alone in these walls, and I try to somehow entertain myself, although I realize that I, 
I'm too lonely person. He dropped to his knee in front of me, wiping away a tear that had just fallen down my cheek. He put his arm around my shoulders, quietly reassuring me and saying the words I needed most. In that moment, I was a toy in his hands. He suddenly started stroking my head, going through my hair, slowly stroking my back. This very thing happened that evening. The morning after, I sat with a cigarette in my teeth and couldn't understand how he had managed to get me around his finger. He came up to me, kissed me on the cheek, took my cigarette and finished it. His look told me everything and we were back in the bedroom. And so it went on until my husband came from a business trip. I even took the weekend off work to quench my thirst for feelings with my father-in-law, which I so lacked in family life. When my husband returned, I was very sad because I had to decide how to continue meeting with my father-in-law. Everything was so good as in a fairy tale. I finally felt like a woman. 